going live. It's official. <laughs> By the way, Larice has not had a change in her life. I'm her husband. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Larice is here, but she's not feeling so well. So my name is Walter. I'm going to be stepping in for Larice. I'm here with Justin. How you doing, Justin? I'm doing well, Walt. Awesome. Joining us from Alabama, right? Uh, yes, uh, Mobile, Alabama, to be exact. Yes, Mobile, Alabama. Awesome, awesome. I like a good Mobile now and then. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be with the dad jokes all night long. I can't help it. I can't turn it off. It's what I do. And I'm, all I'm right, bring here. It on. Yeah, we're bringing it on. So we're here talking about episode five, Angel of Warning, with third season of Evil. Right? Oh, I scared two people away already. No, but uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, I, any overall? Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this episode, any overall perceptions you'd care to share? It made me feel as if it made me feel a sense of comfort in this episode with the way they portrayed the the angel. Mm. They did. They didn't try to make it seem. They didn't try to like shove it down your throat or make it seem overly religious or anything mm -hmm. like that. I always love how they uh, portray these sorts of things because they don't try to make, make you convert to religion by what you see on the screen. Right, 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 right. I always like starting from the end because it's what sticks the most in my mind. But I don't know if anybody else likes to go out of order. But I, I feel like other than the fact that they, they resisted make, making a Mary had a little lamb joke the entire episode. That's awesome. But who's the boob? Is David the boob or is Sister Andrea the boob? Um, oh, really quick. Spoiler alert. Go away this... if you haven't seen the episode. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> define boob in this scenario. Like, what? what well, what that, isn't that what the demon says to Sister Andrea? You just go, oh, there's a demon over her shoulder. Boob. Because I oh, thought no, at first he um, said boo. And I listened it's... to it like four or five times. I think he's saying, like, <laughs> boob. Like he's no, saying, like David's said, such a boob. He said, "No, <laughs> no." He said, "Boop, a boop." You sure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought he was like like calling him a dork. Like ah, what a boob. I don't know. No, it was B O O P. Boop. Oh, like Betty. All right. So, uh, oh, boop. Okay. So it's like. So I'm trying to say, is is she consorting with the demon, or is she? secretly possessed by the demon we haven't like we've seen her talk to demons but you know is she come like you know like i left me with a question who is the demon mocking there her or him you know, are they together um, saying oh we got him fooled i i would i would say both at this point um because they have the demon has uh, haunted Doctor Boggs, obviously, and oh, that's right. He's, he's now like on everybody. Yes, he's now on to Sister Andrea. But I really think that he latched onto Sister Andrea at the last minute of the episode because he was basically mocking her for what she did to David earlier. There you go. Okay, kind of, kind of as a, kind of as a, you're no different than everybody else type of thing. Well, thank you for clarifying that. I, I know I had to get out. I was like, what? Who, who's the boob? Who's the boob? And I know it well, not like a boob, but you know, but it's like you know, uh, like you, when I was a kid, I'm, I'm turning fifty. I turned fifty this week. You know, when people say, "Oh, he's such a boob." Like he's like a, he's a he's silly. He's he's being whatever. So boob. Okay, I forgot that he booped other people. So he likes to boop around. So I guess we can go back to the beginning. So I, I saw this opening scene and I felt a little triggered. Not gonna lie, at the beginning with all the stuff that's gone on in the news lately. <clears throat> You know, disaster scenario, you know, seeing it unravel this way. I all mm -hmm. I went, my head went through every single, you know, horrible thing that's happened in the world in the last year, two years, five years, where, you know, all of a sudden emergency OMG or an OMG, OEM <laughs> uh, locally had to deal with. I don't, I don't even say the obviously things, but. Uh, I don't know about you. I, I felt I, it was very triggering in, in, in a very, in some ways, a good way. It was very dramatic, but it was like, it brought me right in, right from the get go. Well, I, um, you know, I immediately felt emotion during this first scene because, right. you know, they, they draw their, their plot lines and their storylines from 
real events Mm -hmm. every single one of their shows and they try to stab you in the heart because they want you to feel uh all these emotions and these flooding uh instances of dopamine so they try to get you when you're most vulnerable and when you're not you know they try they try to make it to where you let your guard down yeah it was almost like you know svu always did that too right they always bring like real stories from the news and make them and they change a few names they change a few details but this was like one of those svu episodes that was even more real they all have like anchoring in reality and real news stories but this one was one of those it's just like just because every other day now i feel like there's something maybe only because i watch too much network news but uh 24 hour news but uh but anyway i, I just thought it was very very intense and uh, the way it unravels and whatnot <laughs> Uh, and I, I don't know um, if you thought this too, but I had to pause it for a second and think about, you know, what event is this uh, jumping off of? Because, mm. you know, that's what I like to do. I like to make relations to reality when it comes to their shows. And yeah. uh, then I thought about the building claps, the apartment claps uh, that happened a few months back. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is what that was. Yeah. And I'm guessing they wrote this before that, but it, it, you know, that's what's great about this, or the sad part and, and the great part about this episode. There's always something that's more recent because I, in my head, I'm going back to 9 11. I'm going back to every mass shooting. I'm going back to a few years mm-hmm. back when they had a massive explosion because the gas was leaking or something in Harlem or something like that. And three buildings went down or were basically, you know, blown out. And luckily it happened during a day. There wasn't a lot of people home at the time, but. It's just, again, just very, very real. Um, I love the mm-hmm. advice. I've heard this before, but that the priest or the reverend, I guess, the, you know, the other priest gives David the uh, don't give answers, give comfort. And I feel like I need to listen to that, exactly. too. I always try to give people answers and bad empathy. But right. It was like, but I, I thought that was powerful. Uh, I mean, I try to give comfort to everybody who I believe needs it. But I also give unnecessary advice um it you know it always pertains to the situation yeah but they never really ask for the advice but i give it to them anyway because i think it will improve their situation yeah the reese is what reese and i were both in new york for 9 11 and we're both like yeah i think maybe that's what it was too there's a lot of that a lot and there's been so much sense and more relatively that less impacting on us directly but yeah um totally totally um why did, I, why did i write that white gown and the lamb i guess just how many uh oh i know no, i wrote that the, down oh go ahead yeah uh the white gown and the lamb was what they say they saw right lead them out of the building yeah my question was they had three potentially four survivors that saw this right I wonder, you know, again, this is the skeptic that's risen in me in recent years. How many people saw her and didn't follow her? You know what I mean? Three people said, mm-hmm. oh, okay. She just grabbed them or she fought, they followed her out the building. I wonder how many, you know, just speculation. It, it's not, it has nothing to do with the story, but I was like, the way people think. I was thinking like, what else is, you know, the, what's between the lines there? Um. Because, you know, there's this uh, scientific experiments that often say that when you're in a terrifying situation or your body senses a terrifying situation coming, it can often give you a flood of endorphins and uh, wh- what is that other chemical? Um, adrenaline. adrenaline. Yeah. And it can, make, it can make you see things and hallucinate right. and just so it can suppress the fear. And yeah. what if she tried to do that for more people and they just ignored it because they thought, oh, my body could be reacting to this horrible situation. Yeah. Yeah. Or they think they're already dead. You know, you can imagine. They have so many different scenarios that why they wouldn't. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, this is th- so this board here, again, the triggering aspects, right? All the boards with pictures after 9-11 and all the other disasters that happened. It's like, oh, all those, you know, I'm assuming the white piece of paper was the uh the one they found survivors i mean all the yellows are the names they've already identified kind of thing you know or the yeah. dots I mean, they've identified them the other the non-dots they haven't found yet or something oh, just so just tragic uh th- this kind of reminds me of um 
of 9-11 when they when after the attacks when uh the fbi came in, into new york and they set up a basically a command center inside this big garage and they mm-hmm. had the names of all the dead yeah. on that uh on a board mm. oh that's intense yeah i feel mm. like i need to move on to the next scene just because yeah I, i'm gonna get stuck on being triggered but um uh, so well, this apologize. whole episode. Well, go ahead. You go ahead. I, I... Uh, yeah. In this, uh, in this scene, this scene, uh, next scene, um, David, I think he's trying to grasp uh, what he heard as far as the angel with the goat or the woman with the goat, however you want to classify it. Um, he's not sure how to process it. Yeah. Because he's used to himself and sister Andrea being the only ones who have visions. Right. This whole episode, and again, more, I mean, more than any other episode, they've touched these themes before racism, sexism, they're strong ongoing themes with this show. Right. But they mm-hmm. really, really, really told it. I'm not even told the line. It just, Again, more triggering, knowing what's really going on out there. My own experiences with the Catholic Church and issues I've had with it. Roe v. Wade being overturned. Like all these, you know, the politics within the church, playing the politics of society and all this stuff going on. It's uh, it just it hit me a lot. And this this, this episode really touched a nerve with me. You know, the, ep- the first episode, the first scene triggering because of all the disasters and all that. But the whole episode... Oh, yeah really got me in that way it was very very not holding not pulling punches you know what i mean just smacking in the face with it like this is what's going on definitely definitely um and robert michelle king are known for not pulling punches on anything they do they they are happy to talk about abortion and and guns and every single topic you could possibly think of no matter who it triggers they're going to tell you the facts of the situation yeah you know, there's a, a blinders kind of a thing. You know, the 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 church, Rome, the Vatican is so focused, and the, thereby the leadership is so focused on certain things that they mm-hmm. not only do they not see other things, they don't even seem to care about other things. And um, and I've seen that. You know what I mean? I've seen that firsthand. Mm-hmm. And again, I kept getting angry. <laughs> I was like, I well, I, um, oh my god, I it happens. I've seen it happen. Ah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm really interested in getting your take on this episode. That's why I was really excited tonight because I wanted to ask you a, of some questions as a person who's been up close with the Catholic Church. Yeah, uh, wh- what you thought about their overt racism in terms of uh, depicting uh, this entity uh, as a different skin color? Well, you know what? I I had not ever thought of it that way until and uh, that aspect of the Catholic church specifically being a white guy growing up in a white neighborhood and a white church. And it, you know, it's one of those things you don't realize until you're like, Oh, and then, but as soon as they said something like I've known one black priest in 50 years and he was a guest from an African church. You know what I mean? Like he was visiting from an African church. Like I've never met a black priest who was born here, lives here, Grown up in the Catholic Church, um, a lot of black nuns, a lot of African nuns. That and I sang at a church in Hoboken. You know, I was I as an opera singer. One of my jobs over the years was singing in churches, and they ha- had these nuns from Africa. I forget exactly where, but they would come in every couple months and do one of their songs. They do like their dance and some singing, absolutely beautiful. And it, it, even that didn't occur to me. Oh, there's no black people here when they're not here. Okay. There's like one or two, but you know, growing up in the burbs, you know, you're always used to being there one or two African American, maybe one or two Hispanic, Latino. There's one or two this or that, um, and so I'm, you know, I, I didn't realize I, I, I deal with that more now. I'm living in New York, but I never put those two mm-hmm. and two with the church together, right? So, uh, but all of a sudden, but I've seen the politics applied to other subjects: sexism, the abortion issue. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about certain things, but good, dealing with the reasons I left the church ultimately um, were having to do with the the issue that I'm not supposed to talk about. But um, with, not not with me, not with me. But the church's band aid for all their problems they had with priests, you know, it's like a yeah. band aid on cancer. What they were asking us to participate in, 
And I was so mm -hmm. disgusted by it. I did it once and they had to do it four years later. It's like a certification process called protect your children. You know what I mean? I'm not to get oh too much too far off topic, but it, it was, it was like sex ed it, watching all those really <clears throat> bad movies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But instead of bad movies about, you know, I don't know if you ever seen the movie, I am my normal, where there's like a kid going around and he goes to the zoo. Am I normal? Says, well, I've seen a lot of penises in my day. Let me tell you about rhinoceroses and lions and, it's just the worst movie ever. And they showed this to us in eighth grade. And I'm like, this is sex ed. Okay, great. And videos like that, but with guys getting jobs as volleyball coaches in schools to be near kids. And that those were the videos. So it's those creepy mm -hmm. 50s, 60s, 70s PSA videos, but about that other topic. You know what I mean? And just it just creeped me out the one time. I said, I'm not doing it again. You tell me I have to recertify for this every four years. This is not your problem. I'm not your problem. So, and again, and that that same year, 300 priests were found to be guilty in Pennsylvania or something like that mm -hmm. that week or that um, month, that summer, right? We, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. But you're yeah, correct yeah, yeah, on I'm, that. I'm you're, correct on, you're, cor you're correct on that number. But I was going to ask you, um, do you believe they were intentionally being overtly racist? here in this episode oh yeah they're they're intentionally trying not to be overtly racist right uh, that part that i've seen in society where when somebody's called mm. on is oh no no we're not being racist we're just we're just oh maybe we are <laughs> you know uh it's it's that mm. the, the the church the priests how many people you see get offended when you call them on it in this episode right you, you, you call yeah. them on it. Like when you talk to people who voted for certain someone, and I, I'm not to get too political, but you see, you realize like that email you just sent me is blatantly racist. And like, I don't see how, how is that racist? I'm not racist. So if you read that and mm -hmm. didn't think it was racist, so you're probably a little racist. You know what I mean? If you didn't interpret mm -hmm. that, there was an email from Jerry Falwell Jr. that was circulating around at some point and was going around and says, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. said that the re-election of Obama was the death nail on the white man. The white man's Oh, fault. yeah. Right? It was yeah, an old I speech heard, he did. Yeah, I heard that. And this email, and I won't even say who did it, but somebody I love sent me this email. And, said, and then I said, you realize how blatantly racist this is? Like, you, this is what you... So this is what you're projecting. This is what you're spreading. This propaganda. This is, I don't see how that's racist. Oh, okay. i never seen something more blatantly racist discussed as how do you think this is racist but there's a lot there's a lot of like overtones of that and then there's a lot of moments where they're blatantly trying not to seem racist as from the church's standpoint the the, the characters and the church itself right and then and then yeah. sexist too with, with sister Audrey. Mm -hmm. there's a great line we're, we're, i'm jumping ahead but my favorite line in the whole episode is when david says let the men discuss this that's Andrea. I, I I think he was saying that ironically, though. Oh, a little bit ironically, but but I think he was he was saying it ironically to Andrea, but at the same time to them, like I didn't see any one of them roll their eyes at that line. Says, yeah, that good smart guy, smart guy. You know, I, I didn't see a exactly. single one of them. They all rolled their eyes on. Oh, I saw Jesus. I or yeah, they rolled their eyes on this on that. I oh yeah, and that nobody nobody batted an eye on that. It was mm -hmm. so like, you know, when you, you do this in comedy a lot, you, you, when you're doing crowd work, you say something and the person is, again, they got the blinders on so thick, they don't even know when you're making fun of them kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the whole crowd oh, is yeah. and they're like, ah. and then five minutes later, they realize, oh, I just realized what you said about me <laughs> because they're so, <laughs> you know, the defensive and, um, walls are so thick, right? I don't know. Who's that? Anglo Saxon? Actually, Go ahead. I actually, um, can I can testify to that part that you just said about people not knowing that you make fun of them because I do that to sometimes people that I know and they don't catch on to it. Yeah. And but see the thing is is that when I do it, I praise them for doing something stupid, yeah. but at the same time I'm int intentionally making fun of them in a way that they don't understand. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's and again, and half the time it's not because they're dumb. It's because the blinders are up. A lot of smart people just don't see it, what's going on mm -hmm. around them, because fear, ego, ambition, pride, whatever, right, gets in the way. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I had a line, that, again, I just reading my notes, about backstabbing office politics, about when we get to Cheryl's office. But 
Mm -hmm. There's a parallel here. I didn't even pick up on it until just now when I'm thinking about it. There's a parallel of the backstabbing politics in the church to what's going on in the offices. Again, with Andrea's trial, the whole bit of why and who they're investigating here. There, there's a huge parallel there that's I, I just, again, after watching it twice and talking about it for half an hour, I'm just picking up on that. Mm -hmm. um, this, um, yeah, this episode was entrenched in politics. Like you, yeah. you can't avoid it. You really can't avoid it. And I think, I thought that it might turn some people off, uh, yeah. but I really enjoyed it because you know how much I, I love the fight of politics. Like yeah. I will yeah. fight with people for hours and hours on end. And this was, this was my bread and butter right here. I love yeah. this episode. And there's also in this episode, I, I used to love the fight with politics. I feel like, cause mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm always the guy who's angry in the middle. I'm not too liberal. I'm not too conservative. I'm, I, I go back and forth depending on the issue. I'm not, I'm I'm as I'm one of the least polarized people I know, but but I'm very polarizing. But I'm very unpolarized. Certain objects, certain subjects, I'm very this, very that. But I used to hate. I used to love that fight. But now I feel like you talk to so many people. It's like oh, I can't argue with that because it's not based in fact or it's not based in anything other than oh, I believe this to be true. It says well, that has nothing to do with fact, or you're imposing your beliefs that are not based in fact upon the rest of us type of thing, you know, and you can't argue yeah. the whole idea. You can't argue when you don't even agree on what the facts are. You can't debate the importance of the facts or the intention or the interpretation of the facts when the actual facts aren't even agreed upon, you know, that the alternate facts mm -hmm. are out there and not, not just and, the right. It's a, it happens on the left too, but clearly it's much more on the right and it's not an equal thing. And you but know, me not. that this hits on something that I was talking to a friend about today mm. when uh, she's a fan of the show and we were talking about the episode and somehow we came upon the citizenship test mm. of, you know, the United States citizenship test. And sure. one of the, one of the questions is who is the lawful president of the United States? Oh no. And, and you have a portion of this country who cannot answer that question? Yeah. Well, there's civics these days. There's a lot of people who are born here that could never pass that test, would never pass the immigration exactly. test. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't even. Would never even know what percentage of it is. But I would argue forty to fifty percent out there would struggle with it, if not not pass. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's not so much they're dumb. They just they 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 learned it or they didn't learn it, and they chose it to be important. They took or they take it for granted. You know what I mean? They take it for granted, but there's only you can't get a. I don't want to get into the politics. I'm, I'm going down a path that's not going to go well. So <laughs> you're all right. You're all right. You're doing great. You're doing great, buddy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go off on a tangent that I'm gonna regret. But um, but every one of these episodes or every one of these scenes with with the Monsignor, there again, <clears throat> it, the Monsignor feels like like the office middle manager here. That's where I see the parallel, mm -hmm. right? He's mm -hmm. saying what he has to say because it's coming down from above. He's just the messenger. He's just doing his job. And but he was he was also trying to. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go no, ahead. Please. Uh, he was trying to be sensitive to David uh, in in this episode in all of the scenes because he was conveying what they said. But he didn't want to seem insensitive to David because he likes David. Right, 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 right. You know, Anglo-Saxon society hands tends to whiter, whiter. I'm sorry, I'm half blind. But historical figures, yeah, very much so. Um, and the reason said something about corruption earlier. I always have this thing. Every institution that's run by human beings has the danger of being corrupted eventually. You know what I mean? And it takes... But it, what that that one person who gets the blame ultimately could never have done it alone. There's always the people that go along. And I feel like Monsignor is that guy that he pauses for a minute and realizes the the issue. But he's like, but my job is to tell you what Rome wants. He's he's doing the it's, middle manager thing where he's just gonna he's just gonna keep passing the shit down. He's not gonna pass it back up. He's just exactly. this is what they want next. 
avoid that the ultimate avoidance issues. My wife always accuses me of having avoidance issues. The ultimate in avoidance issues. It's like in in the episode where um the one where they were timing the death or weighing the death of a body or something. Yeah. Um, and and the the monsignor uh he admitted that he had uh homosexual feelings for this other right. Uh, this right. other priest that worked at the church. Yeah. But he suppressed those feelings because he knew that we can't carry on here yeah. if we let people know who we really are. Yep. Yeah. And to me, uh, I'm appalled by that. I'm appalled that they can't be their true selves. Yeah. Oh, look, he's yawning. Oh, these guys. So I get to this trial. What, what They're talking about kangaroo courts, you know? <laughs> <It's>, so, <laughs> and the fact that you know, Emerson, or I'm sorry, I always want to call him Ben or Mike Emerson. Or I, never, I never call him by his real name in the show. Um, shoot, what's his real name in the show? Michael Emerson. Uh, ben. Ben's from Lost. Ben? Um, Leland, sorry. Brain fart. Oh, um, Leland. Leland. Okay. Um, Leland being in both offices is is where the, the, the really tie-in starts to happen with me. The crisscross of the politics of both places have similar problems. You know, I, if anything, the, the politics at the other office acknowledges the fact that we're backstabbing, you know, power hungry creatures and we're celebrating mm -hmm. that, right? Later, Cheryl gets a promotion for going behind Leland's back. Leland's like, nice job, good job. They celebrate you being bad to others. Yeah, And here, mm -hmm. It happens here too, but it's like, but we're not going to be obvious about it. We're, we can't be that obvious about it. Our hypocrisies cannot be shown to the world. You know, I, I, yeah. I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely concerned about Leland though, with the straddling of the misinformation company and the Catholic church here. I really think that he is a danger, not only to David, but to Kristen's mother, Cheryl as well. Uh, not only to her mental well-being, but also to her physical well-being as well. Mm. Um, like, do do we really know what he's capable of? No. And I, my biggest problem with all this, and again, it goes to what I was saying before. Every, I'm just going to say his name. For every Trump, there's an army of people that enable people like Trump. And if you don't like Trump, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make a political statement. But for, for what I believe Trump to be, and I've met him personally backstage at the Letterman show. I, I've known I looked him in the eye. There, you know, there's no soul. But uh, <laughs> but Leland, in order for Leland to do what he's doing in this room, there's one or more priests that are enabling it, that are saying, oh, I had an issue with a con artist 15 years ago that I spent a night in jail because he lied to the DA, said that I stole money when he was just like pocketing cash left and right. And then when checks bounced, like, oh, look, he wrote himself checks. So I, he, I wrote myself checks because he was not able to open up a company of his own and open up a bank account of his own because he was wanted by the law in other states. So he made me the treasurer of his company. I wrote all these checks to myself and everybody else because that was my job. And then you look, hey, look, he stole $1,100. He wrote checks to himself. Like, wait, no. And then he never showed up for court. It was thrown out after 10 trips to the court, $1,500 of lawyer fees. But it took a DA saying, oh my God, that accusation, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, sir. I'm gonna we're gonna nail him for you. And even when I got acquitted and thrown out, they realized, oh, your witness is a no-show for 10 times now. You we just have the judge said, sorry, he's gone. <clears throat> they gave me this dirty look as if I right. And I see these people as those people. I know I don't want to go there, but um, but again, for every one of those people, it takes a lot of other people to enable them. That's what I'm saying. And again, exactly. I, this, this episode triggered me on so many levels. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, Larissa is saying, no, 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 don't go down the Trumpy lane. Oh, uh, yeah. But in in that way, in what you're saying, you know, he really is the boogeyman of, of people that have gotten away with literally everything throughout yeah. their lives. So yeah. he is the, the prime example you know, when I think of the the crimes that the Catholic Church has committed and how they're getting away with all the stuff that they've done, right? What other comparison do you make? Yeah, 
Yeah, I, somebody I was I was hearing somebody like downplaying the Inquisition a couple months back. I was in a conversation. I was like, wait, 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 wait stop, back up, back up. No, uh, no. Um, is it is it Kager? You am I saying that right? Cougar you, Cougar Kager you. You know, is Kager you, Cougar you, Kager you? I'm gonna say Cougar you. I think Cougar you. Is that an A or U? No, it's an A. Kager you. I'm gonna say. Uh, there's something off about that church. Their holier than thou attitude is housing something unwholesome. And I think that's the whole point of all organized religion. It's run by human beings and mm -hmm. church doctrine. Mm -hmm. You know, I, one thing I got an argument today, church doctrine, uh, most church doctrine was not written by the people who so-called wrote the, the books of the Bible. The church doctrine mm -hmm. was written hundreds and thousands of years later, you know, in, over the course of centuries. But even the Bible itself was comprised 400 years after Jesus's life. And mm -hmm. what they chose to admit and what they chose to put in, you know, fit their agenda at the time. You know what I mean? And again, not that there's not great stuff in the Bible, but there's certain things that are in there that are like, oh, they chose to put that in there, but left this out or vice versa. You know, and again, and okay. you know, and, and going to that point about how they uh put certain things in there and they interpret things certain ways. Uh, you know, um, when it comes to things like the Bible and the constitution, where it says we shall not establish a religion in America, yeah. people automatically take that and then they go, that means we should establish a religion, but that's not what it says. I forget who said it, it was about five or six years ago, or maybe more, maybe probably more recent. It was relatively modern times, but in response to the rise of the radical right kind of taking kind of coming up more and more somebody said and it was somebody in congress or senate like i just can't remember who it was but somebody said that america gives you freedom of religion not from religion and i said that, oh that's that's, scary that's not as right hell. that is scary yeah as that's hell. not that they, right yeah because i have you know the constitution says that uh freedom of religion shall not be infringed right but it, the establishment clause also gives me the right if you read the text of the constitution yeah. it says that i shall have the right to be free from your religion yeah and so i'm free from all this catholic stuff and the jewish stuff and every other religion that i don't want to entangle yeah. myself with yeah i'm going to step away from it now i have freedom from it yeah what's sad because i there's so much about the irish catholic tradition that i i love and then just, again, there's just one too many things in the last 10 years. The last 20, I, I won't give it all back my whole history. I could do a whole podcast on the history of why I left well, the church. We'll, but we'll, uh, we'll starting definitely... back from stuff that happened in middle school and high school, nothing abusive to me, but people I knew, things that happened, people that, that made very extreme choices about their kids, yada, yada, friends of mine. And uh, nobody that I knew was ever abused by uh, the church per se, but things that happened choices made because of religion which just just pushed me farther and farther away every time they happen but um now there is something interesting now this goes back into the boop thing but um at first my <laughs> uh, sister andrea is just being merciful says he's he's been a help let's not push this he saw demons thing too but mm -hmm. when i fed again this is when i thought maybe andrea's demon was you know in cahoots not so much you know playing chess with her but uh you know is maybe there's more to it maybe he she's protecting the demons but I, yeah i think that's you've dispelled that for me now that i know it was boop not boob uh <laughs> <laughs> because wh why honestly why would the demon say boob <laughs> right 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 well i, I mean, mean boobs I thought, are great, oh, but why? Boob. you know I, i'm not i've already gone there i'm not gonna repeat myself but uh <laughs> anywho move this right along but uh i i do say i love courtroom drama and this this I do episode too. did have some really good courtroom and office drama. Like in the office scenes, it's very Glen Gary, Glen Ross at times. And in these scenes, in a, in a very gross way, and in these scenes, very good courtroom drama. There's great, you know, church history drama. There's so much going on in this episode. And uh, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but do you remember the show Frasier from decades ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you feel like that had elements, uh, that this had elements of that in it? With Fraser Crane, you know, the, the, uh, the psychologist, Kelsey Grammer? Yes. 
I did see, oh I didn't see that per se. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what your angle is there. I, although I didn't watch uh, Fraser that much, so I, I can't really okay. confirm or deny that. <laughs> okay. So all right. Well, maybe Larice has and, and she can uh shed some light. It would be so inappropriate to say boob. Uh, Larice says it uh would be inappropriate to say boob, but we did have oh. the very cute demon. Uh-huh. Well, we yeah. are, we're on uh, Paramount Plus now and not CBS, so you can say those things. Yep. Mm. I love this uh, I, I love this episode with Cheryl kind of coming into her, her own a little bit and the mm -hmm. new secretary confronting a little bit, you know? Mm. Uh, it, it, it really spoke to me. Yeah. It really spoke to me when um, – because this was all about female empowerment and mm. and her finding her feet and her voice separate from Leland. And that, that really – like at one point when she told her to unbutton her shirt, I was like, oh, my God, something's going to happen to Cheryl. And like I got – and I started to cry because I was yeah. like, is he going to hurt her? Right. And And – I was like, she's too strong to yeah. to be hurt by a man. And there, there, it's female empowerment, but she's also playing old school rules and the game a little bit. Like it's very mad men a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna show a little skin to get their attention, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. You know, like it's it's an office where you have to do that still. You know what I mean? It, it, it she's it's woman empowerment, but in a very 1960s way. In some ways, because again, that, it, that's the evil side of it. It's uh, it's this power. You know, I love I I love to hate the gatekeepers. I hate gatekeepers. I have a bad mm -hmm. relationship. I have I, I hate customer service people that can't help you. I hate people that don't put you on the phone with a supervisor. And this guy just being like, "No, you can't go in." I just wanted her to bust past him and run in there. I'd Bless probably it. locked door. Maybe exactly. I don't know. I wanted her to run in there so bad. It's like, oh, screw you. <laughs> um, but what I thought what I thought was really weird is that they came back they cut straight to the scene mm. and they didn't complete that transaction there and it was jerky yeah yeah they should have brought that to a full completion I didn't feel like they did that service yeah sure they came back to it but it could have been done better yeah Karen wants to talk to the manager that's right uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's two takeaways I got here, more from the comedy side of things, but uh, the, the, all the all their drawings are so generic. I'm waiting for the priest to say, oh, look, they drew her. And it, when it's like the Unabomber drawing. I don't know if you're old enough to remember the Unabomber, but it's like it was anybody in a hoodie with a mustache could have been the Unabomber based on the drawing they had that was on every um, TV show. You know, whenever I'm wearing whenever I'm wearing a hoodie, I've been told that I look like a Unabomber. So yeah. Yeah, you need a porn <laughs> stash and a hoodie, and that was the Unabomber. <laughs> you know, he had a, with a weird, well, bad mustache. But uh, well, I'm I'm confident to say that I don't have a porn stash, and I don't plan no, on I appreciate getting that. one. No, no. It's a very <laughs> like a bad Marble Man look, and uh, and then the, the bomb, the, the the lamb kebab guy is an influencer now. He's given everybody this idea that people are carrying lambs, but that's stupid. But <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I I this but this whole scene, I'm like, oh yeah, this. It's interesting, but I can't, I, I'm, I'm just waiting for people to jump to conclusions based on a little bit of, what do you call it, uh, circumstantial evidence. Uh, you mean because they're a religious institution? Well, but yeah, exactly. It happens. But, uh, but, you know, oh, look, that picture, that look, that hand drawing they saw looks so much like the picture. I'm like, never mind that she's black or not. It looked nothing like it was just some generic woman with a lamb, like a Renaissance painting, not so much like a a real person. Mm -hmm. I love this actress; she's been uh, in a lot of things. Yeah, um, I didn't really recognize her from anything I've seen, um, but I, I did think that she played uh, a good evil person, um, especially for one that associates with Leland. And I hope mm. that we see more of her in the future. Yeah. But I haven't seen her in anything that I watch. She, she's so a good, I'll get the dirty work done person. Very effective. Although I don't like her facial expressions, though. Um, because it's like, you, you know, 
when, especially when they zoom in on their face yeah. and it's like they get an 11 between their eyebrows. You're like, what are you doing? Control your face. Right. I love this. I, I just like, you know, the demon hunter with a bat sleeping with a bat now for, for self protection. And, uh, it freaked me out a little bit, but it also started to make me think, is is the angel of warning actually a demon, right? This person is, watch out. It didn't sound like an angelic voice. It sounded more like a demonic voice saying, watch out. Well, um, I think that it was kind of what Cheryl said. Um, when Kristen was a child, she heard somebody tell her to get out. Mm. and so i think that that is going to come back and bite us in the ass somehow yeah. it's going to be connected to her childhood and and she's going to be i think before the end of the season and about five episodes because we only have a 10 episode season this <clears throat> this year um i uh yes larice andy is going to bite it yes i think Thank justin's you. gonna get it <laughs> Oh my God! Thank you, Luis. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna say that with our ten episode season, they have to wrap up quicker, so they have to bring things to a close faster than we would like. Right. Sometimes. Yeah, I wonder because what the only thing I have a problem with this ep- this show sometimes because it's a ten episode show, I feel like they're trying to skirt the the episodic and the serial. And trying to make both work. And I feel like maybe they're trying, like, they need to give more serial or more, ep- like, just, I, I love the Star Trek shows that are out there right now. We, we, we've talked about doing a show about them. But I love that Strange New Worlds is really, they're doing a little bit of a serial aspect because of mm-hmm. where Anson Mounts, Christopher Pike, is, we know is going to end up. But it's mostly like an episodic show it's very much a repertory actors because every week it's a completely different show you know it's a different director it's a different script it's a different tone i absolutely love it and uh oh what we got my wife what does that say my wife and i love this show thanks to the for directors oh cool oh my goodness that's awesome uh the will be Thank back you. next week i'm standing in this week i might be back next week too i'm having fun but uh but the you know what i'm saying the um <laughs> Whereas Discovery is very <clears throat> much, they have episodic elements, but it's very much mm-hmm. serial. There's, there's, it's just a long movie, like the Star Wars and the Mar- Marvel shows that are going on on Disney Plus. So this show, I, and the only reason I'm saying like that, there's great stuff happening. But I think at the end of the season, it's like, oh, what did they wrap up? <laughs> you know, because they, they, exactly. they're blurring that line too much. They don't really get a chance to wrap up the serial aspect of it any in any kind of way. And see, that's why uh, the Star Trek Strange New World show was written the way that it was. It was structured because so many people were complaining that, um, you know, they needed to show more like the original series, which I right. love Discovery. You, you know, I love my Captain Michael Burnham. She's amazing. I love Discovery, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think well, I don't, I don't we're, we're supposed to be talking about evil right now, but it's, it's Paramount Plus. We're giving them some love. I, I yes, thought Strange New World was freaking amazing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I fucking love. Sorry, I really loved it. <laughs> I really loved it. I'm just. It's like, oh god. Um, but in connection to evil, I was going to connect it to. Um, they're only reducing the number of episodes this season to bring it in line with the bigger shows like Star yeah. Trek. Right, 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 right. Now, now this ep- You know, I I wasn't with you guys the last couple of weeks, but they started having this version of demonic and angelic visions and i i don't know that i love it or hate it i just feel like it's max fleischer cartoons all of a sudden like (laughs) it's very disconnecting to like because you you go back and forth now from max fleischer cartoon visions to furries Mm -hmm. as actual demons yeah, you know, or mascots. You know what I mean. We have this saggy titted f- fury for a uh, demon manager. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, I, I was I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going I'm going too far. But uh, but it's I, I love it. Like it's 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 interesting visually. It's very like I don't know if you, if you ever watched the old Superman cartoons from 1941, 42. Max Fleischer. They're like some of the most amazing pieces of art 
ever created uh in any medium it's beautiful fury furry furry not fury furry sorry they're not furies they're furries um they're not nick fury as a furry but uh <laughs> yada 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 and, it, and they're beautiful images but it's like it, it really i don't know it, it's almost like we're doing animation to save money instead of doing other special effects. Now, kind of thing. see, I, I've spoken with Larice about this on multiple occasions. Yeah. I am very disappointed by how they have done this season in terms of the visual effects, yeah. given how Paramount Plus has given uh, their other, their bigger shows, to be honest, Star Trek being one of them, yeah. uh, millions upon millions of dollars for special effects. But then we get this. Yeah. Like, come on, what are you doing? I mean, yeah, I don't know what the viewership on this bit. is, but uh and I'm always again I, I come from the theater world. I, I do improv comedy. I prefer no props over bad props. I prefer pantomime. There there are real world effects you could do that I think are more mm -hmm. effective and cheaper. Not you know, you could have a, a fade in like 1950s um special effects you know for tv shows like twilight zone special effects to have angels phasing in and out or something i think that'd be more effective um the only thing i like about this maybe is it it makes you question it more is it a vision or is it real that that puts that oh, into question more it's definitely not real no it's yeah. not nonsense nonsense it's definitely not real yeah <laughs> i'm like who's the person that sees this says oh maybe that's real but <laughs> it's uh I really want to suspend belief, but it's it's it makes it tough. Um and again, going back to old Superman, because I'm a geek, uh, the old Superman serials before they could afford or didn't know how to do special effects to make him fly, they would have an animated Superman fly, right? They'd they they would have the guy. I don't know if you ever saw the old Superman serials, if that's your thing or not, but they'd have him up, up and away and jump out the window. And then they skip to an animated Superman flying out, and then they just have him. Oh, he's flying now, you know, because but going <laughs> up and out, they would have like an animation. And, and again, in well, I, I know that works. I know you're 50 years old, but uh, remember, I'm only 28 at, at this right. point. So and this, uh, I my don't, I don't... this is 100 year old now, 80 <laughs> years old now. This stuff I'm talking about. This 80 year old oh, Superman okay. stuff. Yeah, 1939. See, I, didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, the, the old Superman serials before the I think that's before Mike's. Well, maybe it's around the same time, uh, 19, early nineteen forties, so eighty years ago. But but again, in nineteen forty, you watch that's like, oh my god, that's amazing because they didn't have any better. It's tough mm -hmm. today, especially since there's so many indie horror filmmakers doing amazing things for five thousand bucks, entire movies, ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, fifty thousand dollars. What they what that what they get for an episode. These guys could make an entire season with and make it interesting. Um, we exactly. think of what they did Evil Dead with back in the day, Sam Raimi, right? Practical effects, all practical effects, and and it, and they what they did was they weren't subtle. They just okay, let's just hose them down with gallons of blood and make it look ridiculous. We can't make it look real. Let's make it look ridiculous. So there's no other way to do it. One thing that I love about. Uh, one thing that I will say that I love about this is that the aspect between the creators, uh, Michelle and Robert, um, mm -hmm. one of them is deeply religious, yeah, uh, and one of them one of them is an atheist. Yeah. So it's and they teamed up to create such a fantastic show with both elements in it to a yeah. point where it's not forcing you. To believe one thing over the other, it's giving you both perspectives, and right, like right, right, I, right. I, that's why I love the show because like Larice knows I hate organized religion. I hate it. I can't stand it. I, I I'm not ready to say I hate it. I I have I've become disgusted with it through experience, and uh, and, I, and I'm I, I've never been the victim, but I I'm tired of being I'm tired of seeing them victimize people I love. My nephew and my nephew and niece were both. Uh, now the funny thing is, we've talked for an hour. We were only up to like the opening sequence. There was so much going on there. We're just now at the opening sequence. But <laughs> that's how crazy. <laughs> having, that's, that's how much is in we're this having episode. a good time. I love it. But uh, demons, angels, book. Um, 
I, I want to say something. Uh, what Kangaroo said, and I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I apologize. Uh, I liked how Cheryl was freaked out by the multi-eyed <laughs> anthropomorphic goat. goat demon boss. I, I, I love. What I loved about that is we're we Cheryl is not entrenched as we think she is. Or it's it's unclear right. from week to week how in she is, or like. I don't think she realizes how crazy it is, but at the same time, she always seems okay with the next step of insanity. She's okay. Okay. We're draining this guy of his fluids and I'm drinking them now. Okay. Um, we're eating this guy's head now. Okay. We're doing cannibalism. Okay. <laughs> it's like, well, <clears throat> I, n I never uh, think that she's okay with something. Uh, I, I think that um, she is merely trying to see where it takes her. Yeah. Because as, as morbid curiosity as we've seen, the game, <laughs> exactly. But as we've seen um, with throughout the show, she's evolved with every evil act she's taken. Right. I love it. I, I know it's something about uh, we were talking. And so we're getting ahead of ourselves because I keep talking about things later because there's so much going on. But it, it's like what's happening now has to do with what happens later. It's hard to do it in sequence and not mm -hmm. as a discussion. But uh, oh, we're doing we're doing fine. Don't worry about oh, it. I'm not worried. I, I never worry. That's not the issue. But just apologize for anybody that is upset with me jerking around. But the uh, mom talking about what happened when she was a kid, as we're getting up to now soon. Is mom lying or has Kristen always been there with demons and or angels? Like there's always been something there. Um. Well, given how Mother is a compulsive liar now and she has bit most likely killed people, I don't think she is a, a reliable or trusted source on true. the issue of childhood. Very true. Very true. What is this one? I found myself... So I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. I wrote my note, and I have I have problem. My fat thumbs. I have typos. Autocorrect. I'm half blind. Um, and my note is: I found myself getting a dry throughout this ep, too close to reality. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm getting angry. I might have been saying getting angry. I said getting a dry. So I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Saying. I think I'm saying getting angry. I thought yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was going to be getting a good cry. Did you cry? No, you know, all? I think it's getting angry. And the way that I get angry when I watch Handmaid's Tale, I, like I couldn't get through Handmaid's Tale after season two because that's when uh, I watched I watched season Handmaid's Tale right season now. one before Trump got where all right, no politics before it got weird, and then I started watching Handmaid's Tale. It's just this, is, I can't watch this. And I have a really hard time. I used to love post-apocalyptic in the eighties. Post-apocalyptic mm -hmm. was huge because the nuclear threat, right? But or everybody's fear of nuclear, but it's like in the eighties we didn't really believe it was a real threat. So it was like, oh, we get this is we can, this is pure sci-fi. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And then more and more, it's like this feels way too mm -hmm. real. <laughs> this could happen. Well, um, you know, I I watched The Handmaid's Tale when it first came out, and then I stopped briefly because I got consumed with the new Star Trek Discovery. You know, because mm -hmm. I grew up on the on the older ones, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm hitting the ground running!" So good. And then I stopped uh, paying for CBS All Access briefly until this came on. I was like, oh, well, let me let me catch back up. Let me, what is this? And then I was like, oh, this is from the people that created The Good Wife and The Good Fight. And yeah. I was like, I was all in on it from the very first episode. I was like, give me more right now. No, this is good stuff. I don't think I've seen The Good Wife. I've seen the first three seasons of Good Fight, I think. Uh, well, the good uh, the good fight is about to have their last season starting October. Sixth, I think I, I think I might be wrong about that. Oh, they have another. Oh, the story. Oh, yeah, I, I, I definitely fell behind on it. But during pandemic, I, I binged that at some point. I think I was watching this or or um, Star Trek, and it came on as your nest, and I just let it play. I was half asleep. I didn't change. I was like, oh, this is pretty good. This is, and and that yeah. has the Irish girl from um, Game of Thrones, who's a great actress. The young, the young uh, person. What the Irish girl? Redhead. Is that the younger redhead actress in that? She's actually Irish or British. 
Was it is that not not Cheryl Haynes? Who's who's the main woman in that? Um, anyway, it's the younger one from The Office that her father is somebody I forget now. And then I think after the first season or two, she's not really involved with it. She kind of phases out. Oh, I'm getting off topic. We're we're getting off topic. Uh oh. Sorry, the boss is here. You skipped the whole. Wait, you you huh? Did I skip stuff? The girls like seeing the, the fear mongering from Cheryl and Oh yeah, so the, the girls calendar, are picking up on the fear mongering. The Andy. The oh the Andy. We did skip that, didn't we? Oh, the calendar date. The calendar date. Oh yeah, he's coming back in like three months. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry boss. But the girls were like freaking out because of that. Yeah. Because of Cheryl. They were reading what Cheryl was posting. Oh wait, did I lose Justin? I lost Justin. Oh no. How did Justin? I don't know. Sorry, everybody. We'll get Justin back up here. Justin, come back. Sorry. I have I have a two things. All right. So I'll talk about this real quick while we're waiting for Justin. So, uh, so of course, I was doing less of a recap, more of a discussion about the episode. But uh, so the <laughs> the girls, I, I, I know there's a lot of Justin doesn't like it so much. I love it when the girls argue. It's a great device that they do. Right, I think it's hilarious. It's funny. It's very real. Anybody who has sisters, daughters, yeah, or brothers, it's not just the girls, right? But kids are teaching, and, and it's like, oh, I got it. One at a time. One, they, they don't know how to do one at a time, right? Even the older ones, the younger ones, they all sound like kindergartners going through. And uh, yeah, check with Justin, see what's happened to him. So, anywho, but. This whole thing with Andy. Now, I don't know if you guys know Justin. Justin hates Andy and wants him to die. So I think Justin might be getting his wish with this whole uh, premonition type of thing. Because this is kind of show that a lot of premonitions do come true. Huh? I don't think so. Did I? I don't think so. Oh, he's just not there. He's just not here. Yeah, check with him on Facebook or contact. Give him a call. Make sure he's okay. Sorry, everybody. We're having technical issues. Ex issues, And uh, we'll, we'll get through this. Um, I'm usually an improv guy more than stand-up guys. I'm really good at the conversation. So I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to hold this, though. So, uh, hey, Don. Justin has left the building. Oh, I think we're much. I got to see that Elvis movie. All right, back to the track. So, yeah, the girls, are, they're all, they're picking up on the energy, right? Everybody's having that feeling of doom. They try to get Andy on the horn. He can't get, we can't get him on the horn. So all those fears about what might him escalate. And we're going around and I had, I have, I have more notes. Yeah. Kristen starts to feel it, right? We get more and more and more. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here because I love this trial. The hypocrisy of the priests, right? It says, oh, he had visions with of Jesus. And so you know, they, they just, they call everything back. Uh, there is, you want to join me? <laughs> um, I do, I do more discussion than recap. Uh, I didn't take good enough notes for that, but, uh, I'll let you chime in here, there is. Sorry, everybody. We're, we're, we're trying to get Justin back live TV, live from New Jersey. Um, I do like David as a lawyer, though. I have to say, David makes a great lawyer. His cross-examination is spot on, right? There are a lot of holes to be picked up here, and he picks them up and just tears a rip into that. Totally effective. This guy that, you know, converted you know, after he saw Jesus, these so-called experts on theology. The problem is theology is based on a belief system. It's not a science, right? And so it's easy to poke holes in. But at the same time, it's hard to poke holes in it because it's not a science. You can't use science to disprove it either. So it's kind of like, who's to say that she's not seeing demons? Your whole belief system is that demons exist, angels exist, miracles happen. So just to outright dismiss the fact that she's seeing demons and angels like they're, they're they don't even care about that. All they care about is the politics of the bishop or the monsignor or the cardinal cohorting, right? It's the politics of it. They they don't even care about all the beliefs. Um, 
I love how uh, Brian is just back there, just not even saying a word, just there, uh, Shrek from Broadway. So uh, we get back to them on Senior. They keep going. They're going over it. Like, this whole thing. Now, this is very much Europe loves to make everything white. And, and I was thinking, like, the Bible was written by Mediterraneans, right? And even the most of the bishops in 400 AD that decided what was going to go in the Bible were very more Italian and Mediterranean than anything else. And then at some point we anglicized that, like, you know, if it, Italians came to this country a hundred some years ago and, and they were not white enough. Right. So like this whole denying that racism is a thing in the church is ridiculous. You know, most racism stems from, um, stems from religion. So Justin lost internet. Oh no, Justin's back. I am back. I'm so sorry about that, guys. No worries. No, it happens. Uh, it happens. My, my, I was my floundering. Computer, my computer threw me out, and and my internet went down on my computer. It's old, and it's just, oh, my God. I am so sorry, guys. No, not at all. I was floundering, and uh, Larice told me I wasn't doing enough recap. I was doing too much talk and not talking about what happened. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, honey. Well, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. It's it's your first time on in a while. Uh, but I've got to order me a new computer because this is absurd. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but where where uh, where uh, where were we when we dropped out? Uh, did you? I don't even know. I, I started you... talking really fast and lost track of where I was. The uh, okay. I started taking notes because a lot of this. Oh, so this guy again. Oh, so now we're getting to the. Well, this this is a good point to start talking about. This is where it really starts to happen because now we finally meet. The manager. And, oh, the manager, yes. yes. Yeah. I think, I don't know about you. I felt going in, I knew it was going to be something demonic. I didn't know it was going to be this. You know, as soon as you said, oh, like, I, you know, I thought, I, I didn't had no idea. I should have guessed because we've seen so many goat men, creatures, furries. But uh, this, this takes the cake. Well, um, the saggy tits thing. Uh, it was really, <laughs> that was, that got me because I was like, why does the goat have saggy tits? And uh, that was, all, that was all I could focus on while, while she was talking to goat man. And, um, and the belly was course, a little dragging, had a lot of like stretch marks, not, not too pleasant. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a big guy, so I can say it. <laughs> I think... And I think she was, with the smell and everything in this scene right here, I think she was sensing how evil he really was. Yeah. Well, I'm also thinking there was actually rotting flesh. You know what I mean? A lot of times they, they associate demonic hell, evil, with actual rotting flesh and putridness, the four horsemen, right? And uh, this is such a great image, corporate demon on a treadmill or on a, on a bike or whatever. What do you call these things? These uh, I, I don't go to the gym a lot. I, I know they exist. I've never been on one. I have, uh, I have been uh, on one. You, a uh, elliptical. That's elliptical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I, tried, I tried it once. It was the only thing worse than a treadmill for me. I'm, I'm a pool. I'm a swimmer. So, uh, but yeah, right off the bat, it says, you know, why are demons naked? <laughs> I don't know. Well, what if the human was naked though what if the ceo guy was naked like that's what i want to know good point yeah is liam neeson walking around naked in this office or ted dancer <laughs> a lot oh, of people want to work there just to work with ted dancer or liam neeson naked that would attract some people uh, still. um uh dude i have to stop you right there because uh i i would not want to work with not me naked not for me okay good not that good. there's anything wrong with it. But, you know, I know some ladies and a few men that would, would be okay with that. But uh, I have to say, as goofy as this demon is, he's far more scary looking than the one that Leland took out, like, last year or two years ago, whenever he uh, killed the last goat. It, it, it's it's the, still ridiculous, but let, I thought that guy was totally ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, I thought Leland was just a crazy guy talking to imaginary friends because of the way per, they portrayed that demon. The design, in my opinion, of the demon is better than it was in previous seasons because they have an expanded budget. Mm. Oh, maybe, yeah. Much more facial de definition. How, uh, long, how long did I drop out for until I could come back on? I'm just curious. Oh, I don't know. 
it was a time warp for me. Four or five minutes tops. Not that okay, because I, yeah. I tried to get back on as quickly as I could. And there he is in all his glory. Or is it a her? Oh I can't my really tell. God. There's no I, penis. I what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God, I can't. Ooh, I don't. I, I, can we hey, Rodrigo. We got some new people can popping we, in. Welcome. Can can we get it off that, please? Because oh, uh, sorry, I Rodrigo to, has yeah. some questions. Go ahead, Rodrigo. Shoot. Huge fan of the show. Awesome. A little more pleasant from the backside, which isn't always true of us big guys. But uh, uh and <laughs> Luis, 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 you've got to get yourself under control with the whole Liam Neeson. Um, is looking better. Come on. Yeah, come on. Like, I just heard the race in the room. Change that slide. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is funny. You got to keep throwing out comments. I, uh, I, his eating techniques are similar to mine, I think. And uh, I have a little more, little more, uh, demeanor, I think. But, uh, oh, I love, I didn't even well, notice this I love he's wearing the wristbands. <laughs> oh, the, the wrist, okay. I didn't see, I didn't notice that. Yeah. I, I just noticed I that. No and this still, <clears throat> it's like Bruce Jenner's wristbands from when he was still Bruce. Oh, okay. Uh, well, he was always um, famous for the Bruce, the, the wristbands and the headbands, the 70s runner look. Oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't born in the 70s, so I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> I'm going I'm to stop dating myself. All right. I'm almost as old <laughs> as the Kings. Not, not quite. You're fine. You're, I mean, you're, uh, well, you're 60. I mean, the Kings are 60. Sorry. Uh, I apologize. I'm 50. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still waiting to hear Rodrigo's question. He said, yeah, he, I have some questions. And, uh, I have a lot of, I, we had a lot of questions with this episode. <laughs> I love Cheryl's, all Cheryl's reactions are great. Boop. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. One, one crazy reaction after another. And, um, it's kind of interesting that like the demon just doesn't even care. The manager doesn't even care. He, he, oh, wait, okay. Why do you think only Leland and Cheryl are the only ones that see him in that form? I think it's the same reason that David and Andrea see the demons themselves. I think there's certain uh, people. Well, um, I think it's because they're truly evil now. Well, that's a good point, too. They see them because they, they're open to it. They want to see it. Right? They, they are... In the club, so to speak, they're they're true believers, type of thing. Like, does Leland see the angels too, or like, you know, because David's interesting and Andrea's. I don't know. Has Andrea seen any? Um, Andrea, rather, has, has the nun seen any demons or angels? Rather, like I, David's I seen both. I I couldn't tell you that I don't I don't know. Um, Let's go back. Yeah. Now, now wait, I'm thinking like, wait 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 wait. Yes, yes, she okay. has. Okay. Remember when she was? Remember when she was fifteen? She said she saw. Yes. A woman in a woman in white. Right. When she was playing the um the piano or whatever, and when she would hit certain keys, she would appear, and when right. she would hit another set of keys, she would flow out. So, right. Um. Yeah. And, and the question for me is, is it because they have certain powers of their own or certain beliefs or like they're open to it or are the demons and angels like, no, it must be because they could see them all. Like, so I think it's, they're open to it. You know, I was going to say sometimes. Well, the, oh, that's not, ex that's not exactly true though, because in the uh, demon of sex episode, uh, and again, I apologize if my audio is terrible. I'm on my airplane oh, right good. now because like. Okay, because I can't hook up my mic to it. So, um, but uh, yeah, so in the Demon of Sex episode, um, Andrea saw the demon. Kristen and David could not see the demon. So I think it depends on the situation and maybe the oh. demonic entity itself. Right, right. Our Rodrigo has an interesting statement. So last episode, we saw that some families of evil houses are gone. Do you think other people see peoples like that? Maybe the leaders of the families all look like maybe the, the, the 60, the current leader, all have that demon following around or looking around. And, and what's different about this one, Leland has a demon following him around. These other people have demons following them around, like, all, over, like the monkey on the back, right? This guy yeah. is actually just a demon. Like he's not a guy with a demon 
next to him that you see, like, you know, they see the demon next to Leland. They see the demon next to the sex demon with the couple last week and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. this is an actual demon. Like, this is a monster. This is, this guy's, he's the manager. Maybe he's the manager of all the other houses kind of a thing. Or So that's interesting, yeah. Uh, and I don't, well, we don't really have enough evidence to say that all of the leaders of the houses look like that. We don't know why the guy looks like that. Right, right. Because at the end, well, not the end. Uh, midway through the episode, uh, Cheryl says, am I losing my mind? And uh, right. um, he said, most definitely, because I saw what you see. Yeah. And um, yeah. so I, I, we don't really have enough evidence to make that conclusion yet but i think you might be right yeah and and leland took one of them out right i, mean, I don't know if he was one of the head of the houses or just another manager but he uh he shook something out when he killed the other demon but, he, uh, he so was he, just a, i think he was i think that guy was just a therapist because he said uh what you know who is the manager going to listen to now meaning that that right. guy that he murdered wasn't the manager yeah well, actually, Rodrigo is what Rodrigo is saying. Maybe like the guy who ate the head, the the Signa, um, looks like this now. But I I don't I think the head of the houses. This guy is not a head of house. This guy is an actual demon. I think the head of houses have their demons, have their are possessed by a demon. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good alliteration, but in Exorcist, the TV series, I think it was, or one of those shows, there were the people that were possessed because, and then there were the people that wanted it. You know what I mean? The people that accepted it. And then, yeah. there, then, then there were just the demons that were, you know, around. I don't know, that's a different show. But, you know, the, I think th this guy is something else. I think this guy is directly from hell. Mm -hmm. They're like Edward from uh, Edward the, Cullen. Or... Can, we, can, can we get, uh, yeah, I was going to say, can we get away from Goat Man? Because I'll, I'll yeah, look at those. Saggy tits. <laughs> so this is interesting. There's a little moment here where David, like, oh, he sees there the. There you go. You you went back again, didn't you? No, no. This is the second time where he sees it as an African American saint or angel, right? Oh, okay. she becomes, yes, uh, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. It took me a second and, to realize. Yeah. And he now again later on he's questioning, but he almost feels like, oh, okay. I could see, you know, is is he anglicizing it or is he okay now? Oh, finally, you know, the woman who's African American or African is now looking African. There wasn't American. Um, you know, it's like I'm confused by this based on what happens next. He could, well, that that face is a little bit, but he seems to have a smile, like comforted by this. But then he's questioning well, his faith again more later at this point. Um. I agree with you, but I, well, given that the Catholic religion has portrayed that particular person in both races, again, I don't know why they would do that. Just make her black because she was actually black. So just yeah. portray her like she was. Like that's right. what you're supposed to do. But, you know, they, they don't want to do that. They don't want well, people I to know she was black. I think the woman we talk about later that, that he saw in that book was a different mm -hmm. saint. Like there was somebody else that was portrayed as black and or white at different times. I think that was a different person. Like the church doesn't want to admit that this person may have been black. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. something, and just I like, think that's what's going on. They don't want, they don't want David around as a black priest either, to be honest. Well, he's token because they don't want to, they don't want to lose him either. Right. With hap what's about to happen. They can't afford to lose him. They don't want him, but they can't afford to lose him. He's he's a very important token for them. Mm. Uh, and that is what... Oh, stop right there. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny look. <laughs> well, a tokenism is like when you hire somebody who's black because you, you need somebody black on your team to say that you're not all white. Right. Yeah. That he's the one black guy in the room. So, you know, South Park used to have the character token, Right. Uh, what did Rodrigo say? So maybe the cannibal that ate... Oh, right, 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 right. Did I, did I miss something else? Oh, oh, you're answering the same one. Okay. We're on different timelines because people hear us later. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a great, that's a great pause, Larice. Great, great. Larice <laughs> did all the stills. Took all the stills. I, actually, the I, I actually can't see. I actually can't see the comments right now because I'm on my oh. iPad because my computer's stupid. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I can't. Uh, it's either see the screen uh, and you or see the comment section. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll read them to you. Larice keep this type a lot. They're like Edward. Oh, Edward's uh, Ben's friend, right? Or Leland's friend. I keep calling Ben. Um, but I think Ed Edward, I think, had a demon. You know, I wonder if, like, the whole thing with praying to Cheryl's little dolls is, like, her way of welcoming a demon into her life, you know? You know, something I need to think about this, and just to, not, not to go a little bit tangent, I was watching a show that I'm waiting to see if I'm actually on on HBO, Pause with Sam J, and she was having mean, an interview, huh? What What do you mean you're waiting to see that you're on it? What do you mean? I, I filmed something for that show back in March. I'm not, I'm not trying to do a weird thing. Hey, look at me on TV. But, um... But I'm watching it, looking for me to see if I'm on this episode or not. And she's talking to a, a Satanist. And this guy has, he's like one of those uh, guys who does the vampire thing. He's wearing the red contacts mm -hmm. to make his eyes look glowing red. And I don't think he had fangs, but I've known guys who have had implants put in uh, that lived in East Village that were, uh, you know, the so-called real life vampires. Uh, mm -hmm. just an alternative lifestyle kind of a thing, a different alternative lifestyle that was happening, big craze 20 years ago, and uh, 10, 20 years ago, and they're still out there. But more having a conversation with him about what how he envisions Satanism. It's not so much an evil thing, it's just a different religion, it's a different way to empower yourself, and and he, you know, it's not like somebody who was lost and this religion found him. It, 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 yeah. It, it was just the way they were talking about it. Maybe think of how they, this show talks about it, but it made me think about how Cheryl might think about it. You know what I mean? Cheryl's not thinking about it as the same way Leland's thinking about it. She's like, oh, I'm being empowered by this. I'm getting power. I'm not weak anymore. I have choices now because of this. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Like, I am going along but, with this because it works but, for me. Okay. Okay, so we might think that now, but in the future, she might do something that um, that is morally and uh, that is morally reprehensible and that she can't come back from. So she might kill somebody in full view of the public or something crazy, and, yeah. uh, or or her, you know kill Leland or kill several of the sixty, and then they'll have to get rid of her. But something's mm -hmm. gonna happen to her. Yeah. And not in this season, but moving forward into the fourth season, uh, I think one of our main characters is is getting ready to bite the dust. Um, I know you're uh, pulling for Andy. From, apart from Andy, Andy, I don't, I don't see him as part of the main cast. Yeah, that's he's true. not. Ar he's not around all the time. But I just like if they want an if they want an immaculate death, they need to put me on the show and let me kill him. <laughs> What's this saying, Rodrigo? I think the sixty are for sure demons. Well, the, I think the sixty are demons. the The head of the families of the sixty families are possessed by demons, like they're human beings possessed. But I think, yeah, they're sixty pigs. They're sixty demons. Um, and I don't think the manager is one of the sixty. I think the manager is the manager of the sixty, kind of a thing, or you know, like a you know from a different level of hell, kind of a thing, you know. If it, like the Dante's Inferno kind of a thing, but uh, uh, well, I I'm not saying that I would go that deep into it. Um, this guy, this guy isn't really a um, of consequence. I'll say he's just a, yeah. a a manager of a troll farm, which we have plenty of those in the U.S. and yeah. abroad too. So he's Steve knows? Bannon. Oh my God. <laughs> He, or he's I Roger you, Stone. He's Roger I Stone. Say that. <laughs> he's got a Nixon tattoo. All right. But uh, yeah, what's going to happen to the friends of the Vatican and David when they go after Cheryl? I uh, At some point, I, I think at some point it has to be realized. And does he tell Kristen? You know, I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen this season, though. I feel like the season's going to end with that being the premonition for season four kind of a thing. Oh, Justin, don't go away. Come back. 
You're back. Can you hear me? Yo, oh, my good. God. Oh, my God. I hate my devices tonight. Shame me. I live by my devices. Oh, that's definitely not. <laughs> no, I was saying, oh, uh, Larissa was saying, what's going to happen to friends of Vatican and David? You know, at some point, they're going to have head to head with Cheryl. <clears throat> and, and, you know, at some point, they're going to figure out Cheryl's more involved than they realize with, like, she's on the what they're going after, or part of what they're going after. And, mm. um, and Cheryl's aware that she's part of the problem as far as Kristen, you know, Kristen's problem. But at what point, I, but I think because like, we're halfway through the season, I don't think we're going to see that come to a head until the end of the season. Leading no, into the uh, they, they, uh, excuse me for my language, uh, Larice, because uh, I, I know you asked me to curtail it, but they're going to fuck us. At the end of the season, they are going to fuck us because they always do that. They're going to For the record, I said the F word by accident. Uh, well, that was totally on purpose twice. So, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, but that's what they always do. They always dangle a little carrot in front of our faces. And when we're ready for more, when we're salivating for more, they always cut to black. And it's just yeah. like, ah, oh, man. Rodrigo here has something interesting, though, but Leland has could already see the goat. So, what do you think allows them to see demons? Also, Cheryl stated she's dated demons before, confirming Leland is a demon. Uh, uh, well, I don't. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and gingerly debunk that that latter statement, yeah. uh, and saying that. Cheryl said she dated demons because that could just mean she dated maybe a few bad men here or there that were yeah. just basically evil and could have abused her, which right. I consider those types of men evil and yeah. demonic. Uh, but in terms of the former, I I think that um, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember what the former was. Can you remind me? Which one? I'm sorry. The former, uh, not the latter, the not the one about Cheryl's, de not the one about Cheryl. Oh, uh, the fact that Leland could see the goat. So, what do you think? What do you think allows them? We kind of follow up on this question before. What allows them to see these demons? And uh, I, go ahead. Okay, I think that they have some sort of like special ability. Like if you get to a certain level of depth in the evil world, whether it be the manager or the underling or the secretary, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you are ordained with a certain level of power. Right. Uh, I, I think to the point of being able to recognize these people for who and what they really are. Yeah, I think there's certain people that seem to be able to see everything like uh, sister andrea seems to be able to see everything right every demon like the, she's she's got a certain level of power or awareness or cognitivity it might be more a, more of a cognitive ability than a power or i guess could be a power uh david sees a lot uh other people have seen some things there are definitely moments why did why has ben seen some of them you know ben and Kristen, like a lot of people have seen something when those demons wanted to present themselves wanted to be seen when they wanted to do the scare when they wanted to manipulate or wanted to help in the angels situation um mm -hmm. i think I, and this you could almost say this is a problem with this show like the mythology of the show is not well defined right that we we get all little tidbits yeah. the actual mythology you know i was i was i made a comment about this in a totally un unrelated thing but you know I, i'm a fan of star wars star trek um, Marvel, DC, and and each universe, and it's not always clearly defined, but they they generally create a, a set of rules that they go by, right? Yeah. Superman has certain mm -hmm. powers, Iron Man has certain powers, different directors, different writers, different actors, you know, they, they play with those powers, they play with the backstory, they play with the mythology, but there's a certain mythology established this show. And I think it's because of, like you said, the Kings come from two different directions on this. Mm -hmm. There's a yin and yang yeah. to the mythology. And, and there's still, you could argue that all of this was, you know, certain people are taking psychotic drugs and seeing things like you mm -hmm. could argue. <laughs> a lot of this is still not actually demons and angels. 
but fears mm -hmm. and ego and hubris and you know they're people are seeing things and you know I think they're well, and I think they're um, doing that on purpose. Like at any moment they could say we talk about X at least I used to do X Files podcast and I've I've seen every X Files episode. X Files I think had a better spell out was more mm -hmm. clear cut than this, but at the same time they they spell it out more. And then just rip the carpet out and said, "Oh, that was a dream." Like the, the whole episode, season ten of the X Files was a total fake out. They went into season eleven and says, "Oh, that didn't work. Let's just say it was a dream." So, see, right? So, what, I think they're Larice, being ambiguous Larice, so they don't get stuck doing that. What Larissa has told me about the X Files, by the way, I haven't seen any of it. None I'm plan to. I'm um, sure. uh, well, I have an X Files equivalent that's uh, Fringe, and Fringe is so much better. In my opinion. Oh God, I hated uh, Fringe. No, I'm oh, sorry. Fringe is amazing. <laughs> you know why? I don't like the guy from Dawson's Creek. That's okay. You mean, you mean Peter? Yeah, is that the young guy? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like him. Oh, I, I think he's I think oh. he's pretentious as an actor, as a person. I don't like him. I don't know what he's it is. Good, it's he's... personal. It's very personal. Oh, okay. it's well, CW. It's, person. I don't like old CW. I like I like super. I like DC. Uh, as supernatural, it's, it's uh, CW, but uh, yeah, but I, you know, Sorry. the the aspect of it's okay, but the aspect of this show being on a streaming service, in my opinion, I think really broadened the the story arcs and the character arcs and just yeah. everything about the show is deeper than it would have been if it stayed on network television. I mean, yeah, to be yeah. honest. If it was still on network TV, it probably would have gotten canceled. Oh yeah, hundred percent. CBS is too, the network TV hours are too expensive to maintain. You, you, you need I too mean, much. What do you call it? Ad, the ad time. I don't think they would sell the ads. I don't know if it gets enough viewership. And though, to be honest, um, they still have an ad supported plan on Paramount Plus. You can still have ads when yeah. you're streaming. So you, they're you know they're still making revenue. Uh, but given how popular this show is, it, it actually genuinely is popular because there's already rumblings about a fifth season, even though season four just got announced. Yeah. So with it being so popular and such a big money maker and hitting the UK in two months, count them two. Actually, I just had a third finger up there like that, but ignore that. Two months. Two <laughs> uh, Um our friends in the UK will be able to stream this show uninterrupted. Um, and, but they'll have to do it week to week, just like we did. Oh, so Drigo just said something. I say, what if Cheryl sold her soul? I think, you know, I think that's why there's a lot of, you know, I, I've seen, again, being part of the religion at some point, And also I've, you know, you've seen so many movies over the years and even stuff like damn Yankees, which is a Faust. Mm -hmm. You know the, the original Faust story of selling your soul and then trying to get out of the bargain, yeah. and then you know all these things where you sell your soul and then, or all you know all the all the demon, even Constantine, where you're dealing with demons and and in the superhero world, and you know we, mm -hmm. we don't have a clear cut mythology, and and I think you're right. I think going to the streaming allowed them to do certain things, allowed it to Definitely. get more intense. And, yeah. and it allows it to live. I, I usually don't like shows like this. I think Hannibal Why? would still be around, maybe not today, but would have lasted two or three more seasons if it was streaming versus on NBC. You know, I think why, didn't a, you, why didn't you enjoy it, though? I don't know. I, I did enjoy it, but it was, it was three seasons. But I think it got too weird. It got a little weird for me, season three, for a little bit. But, um, but I think it would still it would have, it would have lasted. Um, another one, uh, David Duchovny series, because we watched too, many, too much David Duchovny stuff, maybe. But um, his Aquarius series about the 60s and Manson, I think if that mm -hmm. was on HBO, it would have gone five, six, eight seasons, you know, because it, they could, they had to pull their punches a little bit being on Fox. And Fox oh, allows yeah. you to do more than other networks usually, but oh, I think, they, you know. No, Fo Fox is a controlling monster. They do not allow you to do a lot of things uh, out of their control. Uh and I'll give you a few examples. The way that they treated Futurama, Matt Groening, when uh, he brought Futurama on the air, they yeah. wanted to control everything about yeah. that show. Uh, and that's why Fox eventually canceled the show because he was like, no, I'm not going to 
I'm not going to yeah. hand to create well, a control over. Not so much I mean that, but I mean more of the, um, the they they allow you to push the sensors more than the other three. You know, they're they're not quite as racy as streaming, but I, they had that series where they had the serial killer cult, and they, there was a lot of slicing of throats. There's a lot lot more gory. Uh, okay, let's talk about evil. Sorry, and uh, the reason wants to go to bed. Uh, Rodrigo had one more little thing there. Um, I don't. I think I. I think I did. And David saw God for the first time in the over when he overdosed. Yeah, but again, was that drugs or was that God? You know. And I think that's. Oh, we lost Justin again. Oh no. So I'll keep it. I'll keep the story going. A lot of this we don't know how much of it is real, and I think that's very much on purpose. At any given time, the Kings could say this whole thing was a, a psychedelic trip. Oh, letting it back in. The, the, this yep. whole thing was a psychedelic Sorry. trip of David's. David never got off the drugs for real. Um, this scene, I will talk about this scene. But I love this scene. There's very much mom, Kristen, saying, let's show my daughters what empowerment looks like. And I agree. Yes. Fears and and screaming at the train. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Oh, this is the part where they talked to Andy, too. And I thought, justice for Justin. So uh, Andy's on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope they kill him. Like next episode, you know, I, I want to see the girls. You know, I want them happy. I don't want them upset. But cry yeah. a little bit for your dead dad, and then move on. But it might be a red herring too. I mean, I, I think it's a red herring in the sense that a lot of these shows, like they don't have to kill anybody anymore, because we've seen so much horror. Just the threat that they might kill somebody, and then they just do like a a a, a shock humor or a shock scream, uh, bang or door or something breaks. It's like ah, and you're just you'd think that somebody's you're expecting psycho to happen, you know? Yeah, because we've yeah. seen decades and decades and decades. And you haven't seen decades; of, you've seen a couple decades. But uh, but you know, there's <laughs> decades and decades and decades and decades of heart that's gruesome the 70s and 80s stuff all the jason halloween never had to show a drop of blood because we already saw that so just they could they could just use your imagination that was even more terrifying because they didn't show us so uh but i feel a lot of shows now rely on that almost because i realize oh that okay too many people are doing that now that's become a thing um mm -hmm. david also saw an angel who claimed to be michael last season i know do we think now, Kangaroo? Do you think that's real? Do you think that was really Michael? Um, right. I see. I don't know. Uh, in my, in my opinion, I just I have no idea where they're taking the whole season. Yeah. I just like to sit back and 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 predict things, but the show is called Evil. At some point, they got to kill somebody. You know. Yeah. Whether if it's as long as they leave the girls alone, I'm fine. But they're killing a lot of people. They're just not doing the main characters so much. They're, uh, you know, and I would say the person that we saw the most killing from was Kristen in some ways. You know, Kristen has anyone else in the main of the main characters killed a real person before? Leland, we know, killed the goat, but Kristen killed the guy. Like, like, not sure what happened with that. <laughs> It might be Michael because he was intimidating and intimidating and fearsome. Yeah. And, and I would love, I love stories that kind of get into, um, you know, was it a supernatural got into all the hierarchy of angels and demons, right? I thought that no was one, great. No, we're, we're not going back to the pillar of salt. Okay. That's, that's, ah, one. that's right. He's getting more of his little cakes. Those look like the cakes from Ted Lasso, to be honest. I haven't seen Ted Lasso. Oh, the back scratching. Oh, gross, gross. Uh -huh. Shot of the Wars. I love the eyes, though. These are great eyes. This is very uh, almost like something Doctor uh, Strange would fight. It's a pretty I intense look. Haven't seen that either. Oh, you haven't seen Multiverse. I'm, I'm so much a Marvel guy. Oh, now I'm getting hungry. These things look good. Of course, the way he eats oh it is gross. Yeah. Well, we can't. Well, we could eat on live, but we're not going to eat on the live stream balls. <laughs> Shortbread cakes, yummy, so good. I can see the Liam Neeson look alike there. 
Yeah, this this, this scene is very interesting to me because again, it's it's it leaves so much ambiguity, 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 ambu it's ambiguous. Um, but, ambiguity, yes. Yeah. There's so much there. He he might want more than shortbread from Cheryl before the season's over. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and because I can't say certain words on this, I will um I, I will get give you a break on it and say he wants a little Nikki from Cheryl this season. Mm hmm. He he likes his uh, Mad Men seasonal moments at uh old school old school. I like the, it's like their partnership is like it's it's almost like it was a test of her the whole time. It was. Uh, I, I I think it was. Uh, you know? uh, it, it was, in my opinion. I think as men, they were like, "Let's let's test her because she's a woman. Let's see how strong she is." Now, question you know? is: the manager in on the test, or is Leland like testing to see what she's got? You know what I mean? Leland does like the manager. I feel and the manager feels like. Again, I don't want to name names, but a certain somebody who's so impressed with himself, he doesn't notice a lot of things going on. You know, <laughs> he's, he's too impressed yeah. with himself, and he's not noticing a lot of the details, so that all the minions can kind of, in his in his right under his nose, do their little games. And mm -hmm. and Leland's like throwing her to the wolves, and if she comes out on top, great. If not, who cares? Um. Well, I. I... I like that analogy. I can't put it better than that. <laughs> but uh, this is interesting. This, so, the, this what again? What, what, what I like about this show is that they keep going back to the medical. And again, I think that's mm -hmm. one of the reason I compare it to X Files so much. There's what's the belief? What's the science? Psychology is one of those sciences that is open to interpretation too, right? There's there's certain things that we think we know. But the brain is still such a mystery that even psychology, it is a science, but mm -hmm. or at least it's ambiguous enough or it, it, that people who don't, who are more into the religious side of it can find ways to punch holes in what the psychiatrist is saying, even if it's well, proven it's, stuff. If you, if you try to inject religion into psychology, psychology wins every time because in, at the end of the day, religion has no real rationale. It's not based in any kind of fact at all. But, you know, the reason I say about that, and again, I, I don't disagree with you, but other than from a logic argument standpoint, for someone who doesn't, a lot of people see psychiatry the way they look, other people look at religion. They don't trust mm -hmm. it. They don't believe it. They think it's pseudoscience, right? There's certain things, but... You know, a lot of that, and a god of that, that's ego, hubris, and everything else. And they don't want to admit that there's an earthly solution when they've already assumed there's a religious solution. You know what I mean? Um, and be, but but again, there's a lot of stuff. It's but there's a lot of stuff in psychiatry, and a lot of people that use psychology, psychology, in some to a nefarious way, but not even that, in in ignorant ways. They they use it. They 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 bend the logic. To suit their argument, right? They yeah. mm -hmm. they use psychiatry and, and psychology in ways that make it easy to poke holes in it. You know, not not that true. The true science of it isn't legit, but the way it's used in selling stuff and manipulating people and all that stuff. Con men are great psychologists. They understand people. You know what I mean? Not psychiatrists. They don't know the medical side. They don't know the. They can't write prescriptions. But they understand well, um, how people work. No, well, I wouldn't say they understand how people work. They understand how stupid people are. But even like how how stupid, really intelligent people can be, you know, because they want to believe. They want, or their insecurities can be played upon, or their ego can be played upon. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But and and, and um, the same way that people believe stuff in religion can be manipulated. It, you know, it, it's. They're two sides of a very similar coin, I think. Um, I, I I am of the person. I'm more of science than of religion, so I'm with you from from the get go. But the way the world is, I've seen both sides. Be, you know what I mean? Because of the way people believe in certain things. Ooh, and saying. I wouldn't. You know, yeah, I know what you're saying. Totally. Um, 
And given, you know, I said before that I hate organized religion. And that's a well-known fact. Everybody who knows me knows that. Even mm -hmm. some of my friends who are deeply religious know that I hate religion, but I don't hate them for believing in their religion. You right. know, I believe they have the right to believe in whatever religion they want to believe in. Believe that the sky is purple for all I care. I don't, mm -hmm. uh, no, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it brings you comfort as long as you're not causing discomfort to somebody else and what you're doing, all the power to you, you know, mm -hmm. all the power to you. You know, I, I think that the hate of religion is um, like, I would never hate religion. I'm just at the point where like, no, I think what you're saying, your, your logic, because I'm, I'm all about logic. I, um, I was always good at indirect proofs and geometry. <laughs> I was like, you know, it's like, I, I can see the ethos, the pathos, the logos of an argument. Let's not talk about math though, because I'm I'm not good at math. That's oh, okay. All right, we'll go. And I, more more of that storytelling, the ethos and logos part of it, but uh, but just logic in general, like it just doesn't flow. Uh, oh, we got a couple of things here. Uh, he did style. Yes, he did. That that mole that Leland played. Oh yeah, the, she was great. I, I, this actress is good in a few things we've seen her in. Um, there are things that even science cannot explain. Oh yeah, a lot of things science still can't explain, right? And I think that's the yeah. argument. There's, there's so much about the brain we don't really understand. Psychiatry is interpreting the science of the brain, mm -hmm. right? It's not the actual science, but it's interpreting, well, not just the brain, but how all those juices affect us and how the uh, the chemicals affect us and how does the, the emotions tie into thought and everything else. And, um, and it, it's and there's a lot of theories, you know, there's, there's not one theory that says this is the definitive way. There's a lot of psychiatrists that will say, oh, that person's full of garbage. My way is the definitive way. And just like religion, Definitely. their way might work with some people and vice versa. You know, and I think that's, you know, where people can poke holes in what they're doing a hundred percent. Uh, this girl ended up working for Leland Hunt. Yes, yes. Let me just I, let me just uh, let me just please. take note of the fact that I think that it uh, again, sorry to interrupt you, but I think that it's hilarious that the the episode itself is 55 minutes long and we've talked for an hour and 42 minutes. Oh, yeah. It happens. Uh, yep. There's so much to digest here. And, and like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it this show, and again, this show exists. It's hard to talk about this show and not talk about other shows you know. Just yeah. Because, yep. you know what I mean? There, there's so many tropes that are borrowed from other shows and I like this show, I think. There, there are things that annoy me about this show at times, but I like it because they do it in their own way. And, the, mm -hmm. and the, the writing is compelling. The actors are amazing. The characters are interesting. And you I know? don't know if you will agree with me on this, but uh, whenever I watch this show, it makes me think of the Orville because of the heart that goes into making this show. Yeah. And it goes to, into into the character arcs and the storyline. It's just so in depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, it makes me like, like sometimes evil gets me emotional because of how in depth it goes into the reality of the situations happening in our society. Okay. Oh, three, yeah. Don is a friend of ours from the X-Files community. So, uh, oh, hi, Don. He knows where I'm talking with all this, but yeah, the episode three, Don, and uh, and X Files always had very interesting episodes about religion. Like, there was only like one or two a season where they really dealt with religion. There was a lot, the main character, Scully, was yeah, Justin's getting emotional now just thinking about it. I, 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 <laughs> I got really angry, I, I get very angry <laughs> watching the show because it's it's one of those shows. I, I, the, the, the same way I get angry when I watch Handmaid's Tale. It's not the show. It's that it's reminding me of everything to a fault in the news. That mm -hmm. And it's, like I said, it's triggering. More, more than angry, it's triggering. Like, right? There's things going on yeah. there. And I usually don't get triggered, but there's certain things. It's just, it, it you know, uh, I don't want to repeat myself. But, um, I recently... but anyway, there's, the X-Files, the Scully character was Catholic and was always wrestling with the the idea of aliens maybe maybe not she was the scientist she was Kristen and Mulder was David right or yeah you know, Mulder was like the guy who believes in aliens and just believes too easily 
I'll even David has his doubts, but and then they go back and forth after a while, then which is kind of like where they are now. Season three, they go back and forth. Kristen's believing more, but still has doubts. Ben is believing more, but he still has doubts. But David's doubting more now. He was all going, Oh, yeah, believe Catholic, 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 Catholic. And then it's like now he sees some stuff and he starts like, Oh, maybe it's not exactly how I thought it was. But that's see, an interesting part of it, too. See. You you might think I'm a little closed minded here, but I'm you know pretty set in my way in when it in terms of religion, you mm -hmm. know. But I'm all about freedom, you know. Believe in what you want to believe in. Don't if you don't want to believe in it. Yeah. If you don't think that somebody should do something because it's against your Bible, okay, you don't do that thing. Yeah. But don't go tell somebody that they don't have the right to do what you don't want to do. Oh, hell no. Now, and, and my thing is, I believe it's important, as as despicable as I think certain aspects of how religion is being applied in the political realm, in the society these days, um, but certain people have co-opted religion. I think the, the way Christianity is being used right now by certain people is not really how it was meant to be used. <laughs> you know, it's not how, you know, the, 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 the interpretation, you know, but I think it's important that we understand like where that comes from so we can deal with it. You know what I mean? Not, and it's not even to have the empathy for it or the sympathy for it, but to be able to deal with it in a, other than just be angry and frustrated. Cause that's, cause I, as much as I know, I still get this. Oh my God, it's get angry and frustrated. And then I shut down. I can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. How I can't have that argument or that d discussion with somebody to kind of poke holes in their, in their, flawed logic because i'm so mm -hmm. frustrated and angry but then i have to back um, up and say okay let me have some empathy just just so i can deal with their garbage <laughs> and yeah. and maybe win them um, over but see when when i confront somebody about their absurd hypocrisy they don't want to they don't you know they don't want to listen to me but i have you know if i think i win an argument i just leave the room i go okay see you later yeah What's like, if you call somebody racist, they're going to shut down and you're never going to convince them they're not. Oh, they are. You know what I mean? They're like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But you you can kind of appease, right? You can kind of come at it from the side mm -hmm. and start looking at it. And I always tell my dad, I'm not going to say who it is, but uh, certain somebody like, I don't know that you're racist, but I think you're swallowing the Kool-Aid of a few racists and, and writing their propaganda. Uh Larice in the comments. Larice in the comments. There, apparently, she has doubts. Um, She's talking about the play she loves, doubt. She she loves to say she has doubts. There's the uh, the famous play. Meryl Streep played the nun. Yeah, in the movie. Mm -hmm. Cheryl I've, I've Terry Jones, it, yeah. I think, did it on Broadway. I uh, have doubt. <laughs> yeah, but I I think that's and that's a core part of being Catholic or Christian, like. I, I've known people have had what they call, um, what do you call it? The um, shoot, something of faith. Um, oh, now I'm just, I'm getting tired. I'm right, it, it, we're at the two hour point almost. But, you know, oh, they, they, they have a, uh, they falter in their faith, right? And they have a, a yes. crisis of faith, crisis of faith. Yes. And somebody said one time, oh, you're having a crisis of faith. He says, no, I'm having a crisis of humanity because this is not, you can't blame. It's not my faith. My faith hasn't changed. My my belief system haven't really changed that much. It's just my I don't think the church is a valid moral authority in my life anymore. I used to be Republican, as I said, and for years I defended the Republican Party. I, I don't know if I ever told you this. I was waiting tables in D.C. downtown, and there were four White House interns in the middle nineties, ninety six ish. And I swear one of them was Monica Lewinsky. It was the right time. There were four young girls and 22, 23 I, girls. I was 25 at the time. And um, and, and we're all on the set. But they said, oh, you're way too nice to be Republican. And I said, oh. And then, I, yeah, all my actor friends. And they said, how can you be Republican? All Republicans are racist. So more and more so that's true because people like me left the party. We left the racists behind. But all the things they used to say about the party as – dogma 30 years ago is becoming more and more true now exactly. it was always a trend but 
you know, there was always racism in the Democratic Party too. It was it, it manifested itself differently, but I, I, um, as much as I, as much as I would love to dig into this with you, I don't think Larice would appreciate us going Democrat and Republican over here. No, no more politics. So overall, uh, we we get back to the boop or boob, and. Uh, Overall, like I said, this this I have to say this episode might be one of my favorites because it really stirred. It, it, it was very effective at getting me thinking. Oh yes, I can I can definitely see that. Yes, yeah. Uh, and you were definitely a whole lot more engaged in this review than you have been in in previous season two reviews uh, because of the um, the content of this episode. I think. Oh, you got to talk about David seeing the white angels. Well, he saw the black angels, too. I don't want right. to talk oh, about okay. the angels. Read the comments. Okay, I yes, David, to... question. I, I'm sorry, I got to read Larissa's comments. Larissa's yelling at me from oh, the other okay. room. Sorry, yeah, the boss okay. has spoken. Yes, David questioned the legitimacy of his own visions because he saw the white angels, but historically they are not white. Not Some of them are. Some of them smell. Yes, Justin, you need to watch the movie Doubt. Uh, oh, wait, no, stop doing this. Larissa, every time you comment, they move. I can't read them. Uh, <laughs> Georgetown, oh, let's not go there. Uh, you got to talk about David seeing the white angels. No, you skipped the David becoming skeptical about his own visions. But, oh, no, I talked about that. You, no, I did talk about that. But now he questions if they are legit. Yeah, he questions if they are legit. Yeah. No, I talked about all that. We did talk about he that. Did. He, he did uh, discuss that. Because yes. I did say, like, he sees, there was that time when he, because he rolls over after he sees the black angel, right? He, or sees the image, and it becomes an African woman. But I didn't think he found that comforting, though. Um, I thought he found, because his face seemed like he was a bit frightened by it. He was uncertain by um, the the new image. He didn't know what to think of it, I, I yeah. suppose. Uh, because he was... Confused almost. I wonder where that leaves him at the end of the episode. Did, did uh, Sisters Andrea I convince him? Because she does say something very interesting about your doubt is what makes your faith strong. Like some people, their certainty makes her faith strong. Like her certainty is why her faith is strong. His doubt is part of his faith, part of his. Process. I have doubt about um, about Sister Andrea realizing that she dismissed his uh, questions of race and his concerns about right. race in, in the Catholic Church. I have doubt that she was sincere about those, about, you know, the dismissive nature of her um, attitude in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh, more from Larice. No, he was confused because he originally saw her as a white angel. Now, we said that already. We said we done all this. He saw the white angel with the lamb, and then he saw the black woman and said it was a black, and he saw it was a, saw her as a black angel. And, uh, yeah, well, and it, there's a lot to be said. I, I'm, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not thinking of what references, but there's been in literature, in religious texts, in, in, <laughs> in, in movies in the past where certain people see different things differently or see the same thing differently mm -hmm. from their perspective. So there's been um, certain religious things have happened. And I, I'm, just, I'm just sorry. I'm frying my brain. And I wonder What's like, cool? is it all in his mind and he's right? Or I, I could write it off easily as being one of those things where the African-American woman's perspective saw a black angel or, or the angel presented themselves to a person because if they were perceived a certain way they would be believed right or even though david mm -hmm. he's african-american but he, he's been brought up in a very white church dogma you know he's gonna not even question the white angel if he sees a black angel he might you know is that what's up with him that he's seeing the demons as black the angels as white but he has um, this oh, go ahead well, I don't want to say that I know uh, from David's perspective because I don't know because, you know, we're not black men and we can't speak to that perspective. But I 
have definitely witnessed different, um, I'm going to say, aspects of racism, especially living down here in the South, where people, yeah, where people, I'm going to say rednecks, basically, want to, um, there are several other words I could use, but we might get (laughs) banned. (laughs) Um, that want to convince you that historical black figures that have done amazing things are white, you know? And, uh, and that's a trend that is happening throughout the country. And that is what I think the show is trying to highlight. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think everything in history you know the the eye beauty of the behind the beauty is in the eye of beholder, right? Like everyone interprets witnesses on the stand can be easily dismissed because of psychiatry, psychology, psychology, psychiatry. We know people don't always remember things the same way, right? So it's a matter. Of, so even never never mind what he thinks he's seeing. What does he remember? You know, how is he interpreting the image? How is his brain processing? the image versus mm-hmm. what is the entity if it is an entity are they presenting themselves a certain way on purpose or is it all a vision or is it all caca in their heads yes yeah. uh and i also have to say larice um we love you we both love you but uh you're commenting so fast that um you know some of your comments fall behind and we can't get to them all so just pace yourself please i'm blind <laughs> Uh, kangaroo says well i'm a bla- oh i'm a black man and i was only shown one type of angel growing up and they are predominantly white yeah i didn't question it until my mid-20s of the absurdity of all that's interesting oh i would love to hear more about that oh we gotta get you mm-hmm. on here we, we should have you as part of the discussion i'm really curious your perspective on that i don't know if you heard what yes. i was saying before yeah. um sorry um, we should we should get with larice and have him uh on here yeah mm-hmm. i would love that perspective I uh, I have a good friend of mine, Amelia, uh, a couple years younger than me, not not too much younger than me. She does a lot of comedy with me, and we have a lot of just conversations. She's a, a black actress from Brooklyn, and I talk to her a lot because I'm always trying to have, if not empathy, just understanding. You know what I mean? I don't know if I could truly empathize or sympathize, but just a better understanding and a better understanding of what's going on in my own family at times, where I'm mm. like, "What the hell? Where is this coming from?" And and then hearing that perspective from somebody that has known, you know, the fear of cops her entire life, right? That has known certain things. And Amelia is very successful. She works on TV. She's but she talks real when we talk. You know what I mean? And yeah. I love having that perspective on things. Because again, yeah, with the two of us talking about David's perspective and the woman that saw the Black Angel's perspective, um, we can only talk about so much. But I, and again, I, I don't know if you told me earlier. I, I, I want you on just to tell me, make sure I'm spelling your name, saying your name right, Kagaru, Kagaru, just to say, make sure I'm saying your name right. Um, if you want to do it phonetically in the chat there, just so I get it right, correct me if I'm if you need to, but. I've known one black priest in 50 mm-hmm. years and he was, you know, an exchange priest. You know, they have these things where they send priests around the world to kind of have different experiences. He was from Africa. I've never met a black priest or nun in the Catholic church that was born here, you know, went through, I've known a couple deacons. I think I did. A, I used to sing in the church. Like I said, and I sang at the cathedral in DC, the Basilica, and they had a ordination of like 30 or so deacons in one day. And there was definitely some diversity there, but mostly Hispanic and Asian. Very I don't I don't remember there being a black deacon in there, but I, I know I've met at least one or two there. But like I said, all the black nuns, all the black priests I've ever met were not from here. They were from Africa, from missions that were converted, or maybe they were second generation there, but you know, from the mission process going to Africa, and then they were brought Dude. here. To and, your point, and, to to your point of what you just said um, about you know basically everything you've just said the whole shebang of it. Um, 
really ties into what's about to happen with David here. And he says, you're going to force me to resign too. Yeah. One of only three black priests in the Catholic Church this year. And so I, I really think that what you just said speaks to that in, in a really profound way. Yeah. And, and basically what that says is the problem of a non if, if, that's, if that's not a bold statement to make. Oh, I, not at I, all. I really well, I'm saying politically, and if you lever that with what they're saying, okay, if you're threatening to leave, we're going to let this go, right? We're going to let Sister Andrea go. And even though she's seeing the cardinal talk to demons, because politically we can't lose a black priest. We we can't afford to lose our token from <clears throat> Queens. Exactly. That's, that's basically uh, I, what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um okay, Guru, we gotta teach it, Justin exactly what tokenism is, but but uh <laughs> what'd you say? We, we had to teach you what tokenism was today. Oh, I know what tokenism is, but I didn't oh, okay. get what you were trying to say. I didn't get. What oh, you were I'm to sorry. Say I'm earlier. sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's basically saying, like, we 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 we're gonna have to put up with the possible embarrassment of a nun, and she's not going out there like in the public on the news saying, "Hey, the cardinal's dealing with demons here," but she's telling a psychiatrist, you know, Leland's in trouble. They're, they're, we're gonna put this to bed because we can't afford to lose one of our three black priests this year. And that, that that's, and again, that, that goes into the office politic, like the parallel, the religion and the office. It's, it's all politics and, and it's all ugly politics. It's just mm -hmm. in, in the office run by demons. It's like, Hey, we know we're doing ugly politics. Good for you. Stab me in the back. Fun. <laughs> that's, that's how we play things here. And as somebody who does corporate team building, I, that's another reason I'm triggered. I do corporate team building where I teach psychological safety. I teach being nice in the office. Basically, that's what I do by doing improv comedy with corporate teams. I teach people to be nice. I get paid hundreds of dollars an hour to do it. And I love it. I have so much fun. And every time I see this kind of stuff going on in life or in a show like this, more so in life, when I see it going in real politics, I said, oh, my God, that, that guy that I'm, I'm not supposed to say his name again. Um, everything he's saying <laughs> is going against everything I teach. Mm -hmm. Everything I teach, you're, you're basically saying, "Yeah, the Mad Men method was right. The Mad Men were right. You know, the '60s advertisement agency where we just pat girls on the butt like this guy, like the manager, right?" Um, and that's why David being ordained makes this show even more dramatic because he makes their right. He's their quota, right? He's their. Um, Again, I'm tired again. What's the the old term? It's still out there, but uh, but yeah, quota. He's the token. He's. I love that. I love that we've hit the two hour mark on a 55 minute show. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, at least is it? It's not, it's probably like 42 minutes, right? Because usually a TV show, if you take away all the what happened last week and the coming attraction, but uh, you, and most that, TV shows are 42 minutes minus 30, 60 really, minutes minus commercials. Really stupid opening that they have with the. With the intro and then the pop-up book. Stop it. Stop. Yeah, that's seems redundant. And they seem redundant back to back. You know yeah. what I mean? Although I do so, the, the new intro I like and but I like skipping it. You know, I, after once or two times. I love these intros on these shows. I think they're very artistic. And then after one or two episodes, you hit skip every time. But yeah, the way, I, I the love way the you can't skip the one yeah. you can't skip on Paramount Plus is uh Star Trek Discovery. Oh, you can skip. You can skip that intro, can't you? Not on Apple TV. Oh no, no. I got it down to science. It's eight eighty seconds. You have to hit the button eight times. Oh my god! Because I, I can't watch that shit more than once. But <laughs> well, every season is a little different. You have to watch each season once because I it's it's interesting. It's artistic, right? They change it up a little bit, and the Marvel ones get you. You have to watch them because they change them every time. Or only murders in the building changes it every time. There's little Easter. Uh, I love. I love only it. murders in the building. I love well, that's it. coming back time soon. Yeah, I like the pop up books. I'm pop. I, I, that I, that, that is back on. That, that is back on the air. Is it back already? Yes. Yeah. Season two. Oh, Larry's season two. Only murders is on. <laughs> we got to watch it. I love that. That's a great <laughs> show. I've been a. I've been a fan of those guys. Three amigos. Bring it on. I love those two guys. I've been a Martin Short fan. I, I'm an '80s kid. I, he was one of my biggest favorite stars. Of the '80s, him and Chris, Billy Crystal are two of my favorite comics of all time. 
But so uh, there, there we go. Oh, we, we, we gotta get back how before many I forget. Do we have how many people do we have watching live right now? Or did they we all like the second us? five? But we had twelve at one point. Boob. Oh no, boob. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with boob. I think it's funnier. Like, I thought she said I thought it was like being playful going boo. And then I heard, well, no, wait, there's a P or a B. There's a there's another consonant there. But it's boo pa, not booba. Boop. And then you know what? They're basically the same consonant. One's voiced, one isn't. So it's hard, you know, when they're over enunciating. This is good. I, in my living room, I could barely see this guy or gal or what it was. Oh, so now I see it more. Oh, he's interesting, isn't he? He looks more like that George. Reminds, that reminds me of one of the uh, dinosaurs from the new Jurassic Park movie. Mm. I, I haven't seen that yet. I got to see that. Uh, Listen, well, it's so, one of the highest grossing movies of the year. So I got to see it. I, I've only been in the movie like twice since coming back. Um, and the reason, I, 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 uh, we'll see. Thor, I got to go see too. But, um, but so this guy, you know, so, some of the thing about I was with Rodrigo was asking before the demons versus what the, what's the manager, and I feel like there's two different kinds of demons, and there are the demons that look like George and this guy, like they're black oil or they're whatever they are, they're charred, whatever they are, mm -hmm. compared to these cartoonish visions of angels and. And then the furries, the mascots, goats that are these big furry mascot goat things that you you expect to be at like a, some high school football game, but hideous. And these these guys, I'm pretty convinced, are real demons. Like th these feel like real demons to me. They they really? made scratches on bellies. Like these guys, I think are real. I don't know about those other things. Like these. The, the thing that Leland killed, right? He cut off the head of that one goat. Like, well, I, I think. Like you've said earlier before, my stream dropped out. Again, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I, I feel I'm embarrassed by the whole process. But um, I, I think that guy was a real dude. Um, but I, I think that Cheryl is seeing him as he truly is on the inside. You know, where people mm. say, you, you're beautiful on the outside, but not the inside. Or inside, but not the outside. That's interesting. You know, so, I think that Leland and Cheryl are seeing them as they truly are. Like you're seeing and their truth. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like people say, speak your truth, which everyone should speak their truth, you know, be your true selves and all that. But maybe the demon goat men are who they truly are on the inside. It's they almost like so the opposite evil. of shallow how. Exactly. They're so <laughs> evil. Yeah. Well, except. My, you know, minus the fatness, but um, yeah. except uh, w w with the, you know, with the big fl floppy tits. <laughs> but, 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 it, but it matches the voice, though, right? The old fat corporate schmuck middle manager boss. He's a manager. He's not the owner. He's the manager. You know, exactly. and it's, it's like, right out of Mad Men. Yeah. And these these guys, and there are, as as David said in the first season, there are people who exist simply to convince people to do terrible things. Yeah. I mean, you and I see that all the time online. Right. Like yeah, uh, Kangaroo, the, the, the goat that visited Kristen is the same one that Leland killed, right? The, he beheaded yes. him at some point. Same guy. Yes, yes. Mm, yes. Yeah, he showed up at the door. And then she closed, right? Or he delivered something. Didn't he like, deliver no. a bag or a cake or something? No. Um, when Kristen saw him for the first time, he was standing by the doorway in the hallway of the house. Right. And then later, uh, at the door, at the front door of the house, that was Orson that Lexi saw in goat form. Oh, right, right, right. Because he dropped off that ridiculous basket and then, and then Kristen went to his house and, you know, murdered him. I almost said the F word again. But... Okay. Okay. So yeah, right. Uh, even even though he looked like the same goat man, it wasn't the same one because one was Orson and the other one wasn't. 
Therese thought she had the gin. Uh oh. You're not even watching. Oh, you, they're gin on Mar Miss Marvel now. But uh, I watched too much Terror. TV. Uh, well, I, I I don't know if I do or not watch too much TV. I'm sure we all do. Anyway, I I I had enjoy, I really had a good time. I'm I'm I I should join you guys more often. I have a busy yes, week this come week. Back. Come but, back. Come uh, back. A lot of times I'm back. teaching on Mondays. If now you're doing Sundays, it makes more sense for me. And uh, because, and I again, Larissa, I apologize for the technical issues. You know I love you, and I'll have, try to get them resolved as soon as possible. I've already got a a new computer in the cart, so you know hold on with me for a little bit longer. Yeah. So every Sunday at 9 o'clock, join us right here. Larice, hopefully we'll be back next week. I may or yes. may not be back. Uh, all depends what the boss says. She may not let me back after this week. But, but we'll I, have to say, I have to say, in your defense, in your defense, Larice, he was amazing. He did great, even though we got off topic a few times. I do that. It was still a good discussion. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to change my name to Tangent. And I tried to get back on the stream as soon as possible when I fell off, but uh, we we did great. We I think we did good. I floundered when you left. Go back and because uh, right you left at the same time, Larry started yelling at me for not staying on topic and talking more about the show. So like, <laughs> okay, I because I, I, we were so out of order. I don't remember what we talked about at that point. I'm like, ah, we had a discussion going, but. <laughs> But thank you all. Thank you, Rue. Thank you, Mr. Becca, Rodrigo. Thank you all for popping in. And Don, Kerr, awesome. Good to see you as always. And we'll see you guys Come next week. Come back and week. join us next week. Yeah. Yes. Check us out on Facebook, right? The Evil Fan Page. And mm -hmm. uh, remember, don't do spoilers in the room until like two days. You know, do only do on the one post. But uh, thank you for everybody at the fan page for supporting us and and come come follow us on Twitter. Uh, yeah. My handle is not in the is not in the credit right there, but uh, and I would love to is, see. We should we should invite the cast or the kings to come on and talk about this show with us. I we, I would we love really. You probably can't give us answers, but they might be able to give us more confusion and frustration, which could be fun too. Uh, well, I don't know if they would come on. I think they would expect like some sort of paycheck, but you can definitely get the actors on. No, it's publicity. It's publicity. Like our four people will get them more views. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, awesome. because they sh they share the stream. They share the stream with people. Yeah. Or I'm a New York actor. Hire me. I I, I do character roles. I'm a co-star. <laughs> I know. That's my play. That's my play. I'm All right, hold everybody. For we we love you. We love you. Awesome. Come back next week. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Signing off. And three. Two. Hey, let's talk about two more hours. I, oh, no, my guys are here. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, there's a second button.